Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello and welcome to another Nintendo podcast. I'm your host tonight, Matt Schultz, and I'm joined by Jordan Weiner. Hi there. And Danny Tortelli. Hi, y'all. Austin cannot be with us tonight. We're all very sad. Uh, But we have a lot to talk about tonight, specifically uh, a thousand complaints, a thousand fold arm complaints uh, from Jordan Weiner (laughs) about (laughs) about Paper Mario, the Origami King, which her and I have been playing. Um, But first, before I get to that conversation... Uh, Folks, we're going to talk about the Nintendo Direct Mini. They tweeted uh, July 19th, they tweeted saying it was happening on July 20th. Um, And what they tweeted was saying this would be the first in a series of Nintendo Switch uh, games from our development and publishing partners. I I like that they want to do some kind of showcase to help their partners show off some stuff. I don't think it was necessary. Uh, All the news, in a nutshell, all the news felt small enough that they could have done just those snippet little like YouTube clips per each game that are like a minute or less. Um, It it didn't feel like it was worth the direct creation and hassle. Um, So I'm excited for all those fans who love those games. Uh, That's great. I I didn't think it was a... It needed a whole direct. Yeah, wondering... And Jordan, maybe you agree. I'm wondering if this was uh, their attempt to kind of appease their partners post uh, in a post E3 world. I think like some of the games that were announced and I'm sure future games probably had been developing some kind of like uh, slot for a, a fuller Nintendo Direct. Um, and then this is giving them that shot because literally the next day, Nintendo had tweeted out like the existence of another game that wasn't in that direct a smaller game albeit but still like nintendo's also could have just as easily been like we'll just tweet out this thing and they've done that with games that they've published um but i think for me it sounds like these this is like their way of just honoring like yeah e3 is not really happening so we're gonna just like roll these out i don't know what do you think jordan yeah i would agree i mean i obviously we can't know and would just guess that a lot of these companies like Nintendo are scrambling to like be relevant and push out interesting news and information and engage their fan communities at a time when they can't do that in the way that they're used to doing it. I think that's a great point. Cause I, I do also in hindsight without taking this totally off track last week was also Microsoft and Xbox big showcase. And I well, wonder if we Nintendo don't, we was don't like talk about them. <laughs> that's fine. And I wonder that's if it was just like Jordan said, they're like, oh, Sony just had their thing like a week or two ago. Microsoft's about to have their big thing. We haven't had an actual direct in almost I think we're approaching it. Wasn't it September 2019 it was like the last full direct. Um, oh, God. I, and like they've know. had like specific like Smash. They've had specific Pokemon. They've had the mini directs yeah i haven't had a folder yeah so i do think jordan i think that's actually perfectly said like they're just like we need to put something out there to like keep reminding people that like hey we still do other things besides animal crossing although that's been really good for us lately Mm -hmm. yeah exactly (laughs) yeah that uh i don't know they could keep pumping out animal crossing stuff and i would be just fine (laughs) okay i'm jumping in the water every day because all the beaches are closed so at least i can go jump in the sweet blue water of Los Buffalo anytime I want. Um, no, yeah, I definitely, I, 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 I like this approach, but none of the games they announced were anything I was excited about, and I think we all kind of agree. Um, and but people are excited about these games, so like Shin Megami Tensei Five, which is uh, an RPG from Atlas West pretty cool it's gonna have like a worldwide simultaneous release date for uh every region on the switch do you guys did you ever get a chance to look at or play uh cadence of hyrule i've played a little bit but not extensively mostly i've watched my partner play okay did did you like the like music and the oh yeah yeah we and we played a little bit of the um original crypt of the necro dancer too and i thought that the concept was really cool and then we spent a long time just like listening to all the remix zelda songs and that was like enough to have us be uh, interested in the game so i saw that there's more stuff coming out but honestly we haven't engaged enough with the original to like 
be interested that there's even more things that we can discover. But it's a cool concept. I think it's, I think it's clever. So yeah, they they've now got uh, a season pass, uh, which includes I think pack one is a character pack. The uh, DLC pack three is called Symphony of the Mask, um, which includes Skull Kid, um, and then you can buy the season pass right now. I own the game and I played a bit of it. Super impressed by it and love like the music. Like I, t- I turn up the music on my headphones. I just really sucked at the like. I didn't put <laughs> enough time into like moving with the beat to like attack and stuff and i think that's a game maybe during uh quarantine time that'd be worth going back to uh there's some kind of uh like brawl like wrestling game that was announced oh the w w e yeah uh, 2k battlegrounds body slams its way onto the nintendo switch on september 18th and then i think they actually featured uh like pro wrestlers playing against people or like, or like people playing against pro wrestlers like like on their controllers <laughs> in the game but i don't know you guys were playing like also like wwe smackdown on like the 64 or do you ever play the, yeah like, or wwf smackdown i think right, it was right, cause before yeah. they they had that fight with the world wildlife fund um yeah uh i did like with my cousins and i remember like my cousin and my brother would always try all these intense combos and I would literally just keep hitting the B button, which was just like basic punch and like ruining their <laughs> combo. And they hated me so much. Um, I am surprised this, and maybe this is because I'm also the past couple of years getting back into the gaming industry. I'm surprised this franchise has continued in, in a lot of ways. I didn't realize there was that big of a market for them. So when I saw that, I was like, also, again, did this deserve a direct announcement? But okay, if there's fans <laughs> of it, kudos. Good for you. Shinigami Tensei 3 is being remastered for the Switch, as well as with the, the, with the announcement of the release of 5 uh, coming in spring 2021, which could be right around when 5 drops. So we already established, though, that all of us are super pumped for that game and cannot wait. <laughs> Hey guys, Austin here. That's just a little joke because there's uh, about six minutes of stumbling to figure out what game it was that was announced before they realized it was uh, Shimagami Tensei 3. Um, yeah, our finger isn't really on the pulse of that one, but I did own Shimagami Tensei 4, so uh, big fan. Anywho, so that was that was it. That, that was, uh, was the quick little direct, and uh, I, if anything, am just excited that this means more little things like this are going to drop over the course of the remainder of summer and into fall. Um, I'm not so uh, excited that it's going to be mostly partners and not like a direct Nintendo um, related games, but also just like with Paper Mario, they might just announce it and be like, it's coming in a month or two. And maybe that's really all they need to do to hype up the remainder of their games for the year, with the exception of whatever their big release might be in the, in the winter. Um, which should a big release know. still be on on track? Yeah, sh- should it be yeah. on track at all? So, which would be a, a bummer, but they would probably say, "Please understand, we are trying." Pandemic is hard to create video games. Yeah. Be like, no, the thousands of games available to us are not enough. We want <laughs> yeah, we're, more. We're, we are games. the hungry anchovy herd. Uh, yeah. I mean, first if, episode of SpongeBob. Yeah. If anything, Nintendo would it would be the most sorry because they'd be missing out on you know the with those those big holiday sales. So they mm-hmm. they're gonna push something at that time. It's just a matter of what. And I think there was a lot of rumors leading up to this direct that this direct was happening, not in the vein that it did, being a simpler, like partnered one, but that. And those same the, the people spewing those same rumors were also the people who were talking about this Mario, you know, um, collection oh, thirty fifth year out. anniversary thing, right? Yeah. And so, and I, I still really think that stuff like that is going to happen. There are games that we've heard about that haven't heard of much since. Where is Pikmin Four? Pikmin Four is somewhere done in the void. Like maybe that's a perfect game to be like, oh, Breath of the Wild Two is not going to be ready. We'll just here you go, Pikmin Four. Mary- Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Remastered um, Moon Wanker, remastered Twilight Princess, stick them on the Switch. You're good to go, done. right? 
Nice. I feel like that's a very, that's an easy one, but I've said that every episode. All right, so that, that, that wraps up the Nintendo Mini Direct. Let's get into some Paper Mario and the Origami King. Uh, I've played about three hours of the game, but Jordan's much further. Jordan uh, has gotten as far as, I think, the first, uh, uh, what was it called? What's it called? A um, streamer? Yes. That you've taken I just down? beat the first streamer, so I'm not very far <laughs> by any means. But since there's only five levels in the game, I guess you could say I'm already 20% through. <laughs> so the reviews are mostly positive and i will say that playing it so far um i started it on my switch Lite uh because i i picked it up while i was traveling um but i've since transferred the game over to my main switch and played it on the big screen and i'm just like oh my god it's so beautiful it's so colorful um i am the like the little like mini RPG, like exploratory, like fun vibes are there. And I'm like, I can't wait to like go and just hammer everything as much as I can. But I do know that some of the complaints you had, Jordan, right off the bat in our little text chat around like this battle system, definitely right off the bat, very handholdy, very like, okay, I get it. I don't need to be told time and time again. Also, when is the challenge going to ramp up? Um, but as I've gotten a little further into the game, it has the challenge has started to increase, but I still don't know why I'm collecting all these coins or why my health is so high. So I don't know what what is something you're as a positive takeaway, and then I'll just let you unload the, the <laughs> confetti floodgates. Sure. Uh, so just to recap, my perspective is that I only played the first two good Paper Mario's and skipped all the others, so I don't have the like uh, burdened expectations of somebody that knew the direction that this uh, franchise was going. Um, I also just recently beat Bug Fables, the indie game that is a oh, copy man. of Paper Mario, <laughs> and it's incredible, and uh, I highly recommend it, but I think it also like kind of set my expectations a little, a little bit high. Um, definitely agree the game is beautiful to look at. Um, I like the sense of humor is there. The art style is there, like those elements of the game are still there and, and very fresh. And like I have laughed out loud while playing the game, I um I've really enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh things that I'm not liking as much. Um I I don't want to go on like a rant about the battle system. I don't like it. I will say, having now played a couple of the bosses, I think that the system for the bosses is actually quite fun. Um and the distinction that I'll make there is I think the thing that I don't like the most about this battle system is that it removes a lot of player agency and choice, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. in previous uh, in like the first two games or other RPGs, um, the fact that you have, you know, a partner with you, that you have different types of moves, you can really think like, OK, this kind of enemy is going to do this kind of attack. So I'm going to switch the order I'm going to go and I'm going to make my partner do this and I'm going to do this or I've equipped this set of badges because I want to play the game in this type of way. Um, it really feels like a lot of those choices are removed. The enemies come in in a specific formation and then move. So, you know, that you have to put them back in a specific formation um, that started yeah. to loosen up a little bit as I've gotten further in the game. And it's definitely gotten harder, but especially I'm not a spatial thinker. So I've actually found some of them challenging in that sense. But it hasn't been challenging to me strategically um, because I really have like two moves that I can do. And I always seem to have the exact right number of turns that I need to attack the enemies. Um, and so I just, I um, between that and the persistence of the Olivia Navi character, um, something <laughs> I thought we had outgrown a decade ago after the slate of like terrible, uh, Navi standing characters in every, uh, Zelda game or Nintendo game at the time. Um, I just feel like there's too much handholding and not, not enough player choice or strategy. In fact, I have remarked multiple times, like between bug fables and then, Ring Fit Adventure, which I'm playing consistently three times a week. I feel like I've had much better oh, RPG combat like experiences. Um, I feel like I get to employ a lot more thinking and strategy about the types of moves that I'm going to do and have a lot more differentiation and like types of moves I want to focus on in Ring Fit Adventure versus uh. um, this this RPG. So that's that's my main thing about the battle system is I just feel like I go into each battle being like, oh, here we go again, instead of, okay, how am I going to strategize how to, you know, effectively do this? The boss battles give you a little bit more agency because you get to chart a path to the boss. So you can chart the path such that you do different types of moves or you pick up different types of items. And so those I've actually really enjoyed because I feel like we've gotten mm -hmm. a little piece of that back a little bit. Um, so 
that's my main uh, kind of grievance off the bat. Um, while I like Olivia's dialogue and she's a funny character, the hand holding is needs to go and has continued hours into the game. Um, and then if I could just have a quick feminist gamer corner, all of the terrible, <laughs> all of the terrible, uh, like companions that nag you the entire time are always women, which is weird. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. as, uh, especially in Nintendo where these types of characters are yeah. the most frequent. Uh, it just occurred to me today as I was thinking about it, like the first characters that come to mind in this vein would be Navi, Midna, the terrible one from Skyward Sword. Um, but they're almost all like the naggy women characters, which I don't know if that's intentional, but I'm just throwing that Fee. out there into the void. Yes. Fee. That's right. But, but Fee yeah, was point the to be interested. sword. <laughs> Uh, that's not the female <laughs> representation that I that I want in games. Uh, I'll just <laughs> right. I'll just yeah. put that out there now. right now. Yeah. Um, beyond that, the toads were fun initially. There are probably five times as many toads to find as I think there should be. Um, and <laughs> is it like the Korok seeds? Or there's just yeah, a bajillion of them. There's just okay. a bajillion of them, and it's like you have to just literally whack everything. Well, those, there's hand. a lot of stands, you know, to fill. <laughs> Actually, that's that's one thing I'm like, oh, this is going to be exciting. Like, I like that I, like, enter this random arena and there's all these empty stands initially. You know, that's you get a couple of toads as you start to fill them up. Also, if you caught, like, the little things that they say yes, what during they say the battles, they are funny in the background. Um, one was like, oh, what happened? I closed my eyes. <laughs> um, speaking of female representation, actually, uh, uh, Brie Larson, d- did you hear about this? She recently um, came out to say uh, that she was really interested in playing Samus Aran in a, in a Nintendo Saw the film. tweet. A and P liked yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, <laughs> she um, basically I, she she talks about how she bought like one of those fifty dollar like body costumes that they sell. You see a lot of people wearing Samus that that one onesie at like Comic Con and other places so she wore it and i think people were like went off and like oh my god you'd be great like if nintendo ever did like a live action of this um so i thought that, that that's interesting that would be um, cool if there was ever a good video game live action movie i would be excited <laughs> i think she hey pokemon was so good <laughs> also Sonic did well at the box office. So I actually, I actually really I, want to watch Sonic. I want to see I Sonic. Do I do not want to pay money to see Sonic. That's where there I it stand. Is. Yeah. Our, uh, <laughs> our, buddy, our buddy watched it uh, and said he actually really enjoyed it. And he's kind of cynical. And I hope you're listening. You know who you are if you're listening to this. And you're thinking, this might be me. It is you. Um, Hi, Cody. Anywho. <laughs> anyway, yes. I, I agree the toads are funny. Their dialogue is funny. I think that the thing is like, they're all toads. It would be way more interesting if you were rescuing different types of characters. They're all just kind of generic toads that have funny things to say. That's really a thing. I feel mm-hmm. like in previous Paper Marios that have been good, they have introduced new types of characters or like interesting levels that really stick with you, like environments and characters that really stick with you that I remember, you know, 20 years later from the the original game. Um, and this one is just all toads. And like the first two levels are both mountains with different toads in them. Um, and I, I, uh, like have really enjoyed the pieces of the game where we start to see something a little bit more interesting or memorable. I wish that like, if we had to rescue 500 different characters from the world that all say quippy things, maybe some of them had to have been, uh, you know, different, different species of characters or something just a, a little bit more, um, more interesting. I think that they kind of tipped their hand a little bit at some of the more interesting elements of the game by including them in the trailer, like the bosses being school supplies is awesome and inventive, but I already knew that. So it didn't surprise me when I, mm-hmm. when I encountered them in the game. So I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I came in here to complain about it. Now I kind of feel bad. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I'm enjoying the game. Uh, it's fun. Uh, like it is a very beautiful and fun game. Um, I think I would just say temper your expectations a little bit. And if you want, if you want a game with worse platforming, because it's not as polished, but better battle elements, way more memorable characters and levels. Play Bug Fables for twenty five dollars. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good time, and it's awesome that two people made it themselves. Um, so that's 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 my take.
That's the thing I think from my few hours of watching my roommate play, I think I enjoy the most is just all the, and I could totally see, like, I absolutely see the, like, over hand holding and, like, over explaining every single thing. And, like, um, I think the thing that because I wasn't actively playing it and I was just watching, all I was doing was just reading all the side comments of literally anybody on screen and yeah. just, like, dying because of, it was either uh, super self referential or, like, you know, punny or. Um, I just loved at the very beginning when, like, you see the, it's not a spoiler, it's the beginning of the game, uh, the brother and sister are like, oh, brother, oh, sister, and then Bowser's up to the side, he goes, wow, what a terrible family dynamic. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, he's, like, commenting the whole time. <laughs> You're, like, getting up the stairs of the castle in the beginning of the game, and the whole time his character's like, oh, oh are we there yet? Oh, yeah. so close. You know, yeah. like, oh, thank God. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, the, the writing is really, really funny, and I think one of the saving graces so far. Like, your experience of like just the level design and like does the world feel explorable to you like is that brought is that sucked you in at all not yet but from the trailer it seems like that's gonna open up a little bit so i'm really interested in what that's gonna feel like when it opens up um it's just that the areas i've been exposed to so far have not been memorable to me in any way they've kind of been like the typical like here's the green rolling hills level you know um and now we're in a rolling hills level except it's all red because it's autumn um and yeah. so uh in that sense i haven't been like ooh, what's over there because it just seems like more of the same but i know in the future there will it will probably open up a little bit more so like that's an that entices me to keep playing because i want to see what else it has to offer yeah i was yeah i was gonna say it didn't seem too too explorable yet um, I need to make my roommate sit down and play more so I can watch an enjoyment. Um, <laughs> but I did want to comment that it does look beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I had only in passing over the years seen Paper Mario stuff. I never played in the series. Um, all the paper stuff is, is is pretty looking. But have you all seen that video like saying why does Paper Mario have the best water in any like video game? And they show like the <laughs> moat. And like at first I thought it was a joke, but I was looking at it. I was like. The physics, the textures, like th this is like the best water in like any game on Switch. Um, and I'm like, wait, why does Paper Mario? I mean, like, kudos, but what about all these other games? Like, can't they get better water? <laughs> and I was just like, well, wow, I think it, it's so it, creative. Like the way, like you know, when like a pipe of water goes off in that game, right? Like you see like blue like scrap paper mm -hmm. spewing out into then what they like formally make as water, but then. Um, even like the trees, some of the trees are just kind of like torn up. They're like it's meant to look like torn up pieces of like green construction paper, mm -hmm. all kind of like flowing upward. Like the the detail there is really great. But I wanted to bring this up really quick. So uh, the um, there was a report on uh, the sales numbers, uh, the first week sales numbers in, in Japan. Um, and so overall, Paper Mario: The Origami King sold 109 thousand um plus copies in the first week um this is specifically in japan um but this article kind of stacked that up with the other paper mario releases where in the paper mario franchise do you think this fits it, first through six where do you think it ranks uh, in, in i'm gonna say at japan least, first week sales i'm gonna say at least second at least second okay yeah what about you jordan mm. This top. I'm gonna say second or third. Okay, this ranks fifth oh. in sales. Whoa. Can you can you guess what the sixth <laughs> one is? Mind blown. The sixth one is Color Splash on the Wii the U. The paper mache monster, because that's definitely a title um, in the series. <laughs> which is, but I mean, Color Splash sold barely, not even thirty thousand copies in the first week uh, in Japan. Mm. So, uh, one hundred nine thousand copies. It's a lot but only puts it in fifth. Uh, in fourth place was the N64's Paper Mario with 118,000 copies. Uh, and in third place was Paper Mario Sticker Star on the 3DS, um, which was cool and novel because it was a portable Paper Mario game uh, with 130,000 copies. At 137,000 copies in its first week was Paper Mario 1000 Year Door. Yeah. Uh, um, and this kind of makes sense to me. The first one was uh, Super Paper Mario on the Wii, which immediately um, 
you know, it was the follow up to the 2000 year door Mm -hmm. also on Nintendo's, you know, mega hit Wii system. Um, And I think a lot of people loving thousand year door were super pumped for the other one, but uh, Super Mario on the Wii sold 156,000 copies. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting take. Still sold a lot, but but not as well as, you know, four uh, other games in the franchise, at least in the first week. I don't know what the total sales numbers are right now. Um, but I actually do have the lifetime sales of all of those games. Which of those all of those games do you think sold the most? Um, it is... Paper Mario Sticker Star in the 3DS. Really? And I think just with the lifetime of the uh, of the 3DS, mm-hmm. uh, all the iterations of that console. Uh, Probably helped. Yeah, it sold 564,000 copies. Wow. Um, GameCube sold 409,000 copies. Um, the Wii sold 506. So with 60,000 more copies over the Wii, the 3DS was the strongest. Um, <laughs> Paper Mario Color Splash sold in total sixty three thousand copies. Oh. This is this might specifically this doesn't specify if that's lifetime sales uh, specifically in Japan. Um, I, I'm gonna guess that's is in Japan. Um, Part of that's because it's on the the Wii U though, which very few people yeah. had. Um, yep. I think these numbers really demonstrate too that just gen- like the caution with which people are approaching the new game because of the direction of the franchise. I know a lot of people that are like, oh, yeah, that looks really fun, but I've bought a lot of games recently, so I'm going to wait and see how that, you know, let me know what you think for, before, you know, pre-ordering it. But instead of doing that, they were going to wait and see how it, things shook out. I guess I want to just throw it to you first, Danny. What, what do you hope to see from Nintendo, given the context of the of, of our time right now yeah uh, what do you realistically expect to see and also what do you what do you really want to see from them before the end of the calendar year i i'll, I'll go with what i want to see first um because I, I think my wants have a little bit more maybe imagination compared to our reality right now but i would like to see some kind of update on metroid prime 4 i'd like to see some update on breath of the wild 2 um i and maybe something Along the lines of, and I know I shouldn't expect this because they even just earlier this year said they think Switch is only halfway through its life cycle, but I'm still, I think like we did the same thing at the end of the year show once before in the past year or two of like, will we finally get news on the Switch Pro? Like, um, so there's my wants. What I actually expect and what I'm totally understandable for this expectation, I expect we may only get one big uh announcement like first party stuff before the end of the year um only because of just a lot of the restrictions and and um or uh, uh shutdowns and stuff like that and the, the halts to production um i feel like it's be a lot more of the indie um side of things and maybe even just smaller um uh games so i i expect things to be halted quite a bit as kind of the vibe i'm getting um in general yeah yeah, I think that Jordan. I think that was very well said. I would echo all of that. Um, I I yeah, I think it would be great to get news about these big sequel games that we've been told are coming. Um, but I think it's really going to be like the rest of the year for the indies, which is awesome. Um, I've recently been playing a lot more uh, indie games than I ever have before. I love that I can play them on my Switch. Um, I think that is a really great opportunity for people to explore games and hear from different developers than they would if they're normally only playing kind of mainline Nintendo games. So I think that's great. Um but probably not a great rest of the year if you're really expecting these kind of big hitter franchise. Yeah. Uh again, I, I, I completely agree with both of you. I I really what I'm hoping for, given everything, is that um we'll get some kind of uh a, a, like first party game or two before the end of the year that was was going to be announced but um it's probably a game they've already put a ton of work in and we're just waiting on um could be a pikmin i just don't think they need to kind of continue to push marketing um and that consumers are pretty forgiving at this point 
um, and they could still sell really well. So I think we're going to see something along the line. Like I so said, we're going to see a big Nintendo franchise in some way, shape, or form for the holiday. Uh, I would like to see, though, like another Paper Mario-sized game drop in like the fall. And they, they usually do that. Last fall was insane with all the games we got um between luigi's mansion and um fire emblem was pokemon. like late, late summer yeah sword and shield was later i would love to continue some animal crossing updates um i mean mm-hmm. that's a that's a game that's definitely got a long lifetime and i think we'll see them continue to put effort into that you've also uh, they recently announced more Splatfest for Splatoon, a game that's been out for uh, Splatoon 2 that's been out for a while now since the Switch launched. So, like, that's a, you know, they initially thought we were they were stopping, but they're they're going to continue those Splatfest, which is awesome. So I'd love to see them continue to kind of invest. I'm hoping, and this is a, 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 a out on a limb there, but some kind of free or paid for DLC drop for Mario Party that's way more online friendly right now. Like that would just be a huge hit. Um, more maps, know, so. more characters. Yeah, that more makes me think more, too. More maps. If we're talking about like wish list things, and this is not a, a hot take at all. Yeah. But, yes. Of but course. I just like they need to be better about online stuff. It's just always a, <laughs> yes. this is always a weak point. I don't understand yes. why it's a weak point. I mean, because they're fine without it, but compared to the other systems, just. The functionality is so minimal. Uh, my partner and I were just talking today about how every Nintendo game has built in trophies within the game, like Paper Mario, it's no exception. Yeah, but yeah, unlike yeah. other systems like PlayStation, where those things are public and visible and you can kind of engage with your friends about how, you know, the progress you made or you found something cool or got some achievement that they didn't have, um, that that doesn't exist at all. It's like we're so close, we're just a step away. Um mm-hmm. uh, always and always just behind the ball. On so this. I don't know. I think especially now when we're all going to be stuck in our homes uh, for the foreseeable future, like this is how people build community. It would be great to expand some online functionality. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was going to say, just if you could make that stuff more robust, like you're already sitting on a whole bunch of gold mines. Mm-hmm. Um, just just make it easier. Yeah, clean up your <laughs> clean up your app for communicating to people via their smart devices. Yep. Uh, and this is the app right now. You can't see it because you know you're listening to this podcast. But Jordan, Danny, <laughs> you can see it. My friend just recently got Animal Crossing in a Switch, and she was someone I used to play Switch or uh, Animal Crossing with back on like the GameCube uh, mm-hmm. and or the Wii, excuse me, City Folk in college, um, and. She jumped on and she was excited to visit my town before this. And I was like, oh, yeah, have you gotten the app yet? She's like, no, I had no idea about the app. Is it like the is it like the WeChat feature? I don't know if you remember that peripheral, but it was a little microphone that you could plug into your Wii. And it came with City Folk so that you could voice chat. It was like the only game that really utilized it. That and some in Conduit, a uh, shooter game. Anyways, the app's not loading. Like the <laughs> Nintendo app is not loading right now. And it's been doing this all night. And I've even like deleted it and re re um downloaded it so i don't know what's happening but it's like stuff like this and i'm like ah, well please. it's not like you're using like a, a pretty brand new smartphone that's really expensive or anything oh no wait it is a brand new phone the app just <laughs> sucks <laughs> it is annoying that this stuff isn't like up to par yet and you f- i feel like the switch can absolutely handle it so maybe we'll see those features come in a switch pro um, because I do think that that we're, we'll still see something like that happen because, um, I mean, look, they're willing to create a different version of their switch. It's still selling as a switch in general, you know, it's a switch light, but still it's in the, within the switch family, just like the 3ds ultimately was. So if this is really a halfway mark in the lifetime, I think we're absolutely going to see an updated uh model i mean i as much as a new mario kart would be great same with mario party i'm like just give me a bunch of dlc like give me more tracks give me more car parts to unlock and like i love this one enough that I, that would suffice me for a while um yeah and then um yeah more smash characters is you know great as long as i actually know who the characters are and i they're all not just a bunch of random sword fighters i never heard of before um, Paper Mario, bring Olivia. <laughs> Olivia, bring her to. <laughs> it would be like 
<laughs> oh, it's the Origami King. He gets a character in Smash. <laughs> Goodness, yeah. All right, and with that, uh, this has been another Nintendo podcast. Uh, it's been super fun talking with both of you about all things Nintendo, especially Paper Mario. We're going to go and try to finish it. Danny's going to watch his roommate hopefully beat it um, and laugh <laughs> at all the jokes along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm Matt Schultz. we got Danny Tritelli, Jordan Weiner, and we'll see you in another Nintendo podcast in the future. Bye, everyone. Bye, y'all. Bye. All right, so that, that, that wraps up the Nintendo Mini Direct. Let's get into some Paper Mario and the Origami King. Cue the music, Austin. Um, Poor Austin. <laughs>